Hello, and welcome to Soothing Pod's Sleep Stories. My name is Arif, and tonight I will be your guide as we fall asleep to the soothing, sun-kissed tale of a couple in love over a blissful summer weekend. But before we begin, let us take a moment to relax and find comfort in the space that we are in. Close your eyes and allow yourself to sink into your mattress. There is nothing you have to do in this moment. No obligations, no tasks, no expectations. You can just simply be. For a moment, Picture yourself on a beach. Truly imagine it. Is it a tropical beach with turquoise waters that stretch to the horizon? Are there palm trees swaying above you in the gentle ocean breeze? Or perhaps you're on a beach nestled in a rocky cove in New England. Can you hear the lighthouse beacon spinning in the distance? Can you hear the sound of the waves lapping against the shore as the water floats in, then drifts back, floats in, then drifts back, floats in, then drifts back? You are the one crafting your beach so it can be whatever you desire. You can have a cool drink in hand. You can be curled up, soaking in the sun on a warm, fluffy blanket. You can have your toes in the sand as the ocean rises to meet you. You can be moments away from sleep with the sound of seagulls and the crashing waves filling the air around you, bringing you total peace. As you grow closer and closer to sleep, turn your attention to your breath. When you inhale, try to imagine that ocean wave coming in brushing against the shore and the bottom of your feet. As you hold your breath, feel the waves splash across you. And as you exhale, picture that wave going back out to sea, only to return to you a few moments later. Breathe in for one, two, three, four, five. Hold for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And exhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Breathe in for one, two, three, four, five. Hold for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And exhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Notice the wave floating towards you. Feel the wave over your feet, watching the foam and bubbles, and picture that wave floating back to sea, glistening in the sun as it recedes. Notice the wave floating towards you. Feel the wave over your feet, watching the foam and bubbles, and picture that wave floating back to sea, 
glistening in the sun as it recedes. Continue to breathe comfortably like this until you fall asleep. Know that at any time you can return to your own personal beach and find comfort in the waves of your imagination. Now that we have taken the time to relax and find comfort in the space that we are in, let us begin. Summer seemed to wash over the Isle of Hope slowly at first, and then abruptly each year. In spring, the flowers and the earth would shrug off the last bit of winter and embrace the new sunshine and warmth. For weeks, there would be promises of spring and summer just on the horizon. It would start with the trees. By the time April came around, green-tinged buds would start to sprout from the trees. It would be one tree at a time, subtle, almost unnoticeable if you weren't looking for it. Then, May would roll around. The soft grass would shift from a dull brown to a vibrant, deep green that blanketed the mountains and hills and yards of the small island community. The trees would bloom and flourish in a wave of green and yellow that seemed to pass over the town overnight. And then, summer seemed to be upon them. The entire town would glow in the light of thousands of wildflowers that peppered the hillsides and descended from the trees overhead. Wisteria knew it was summer the minute she opened her cottage window. From there, perched atop the largest mountain on the island, she could see everything. From the white, sandy beaches, over the distant lighthouse, all the way to the lobster boats bobbing in the water, still veiled by the haze of morning. Her window was nestled between thick lilac and honeysuckle bushes that filled the air with a fragrant, welcoming aroma. She hovered in that window for a moment, her hands dangling limply in the window frame. Her eyes closed as she took in the sweet smell of the warm ocean breeze and felt it brush over her face. And when she opened her eyes, something caught her eye, something that told her this summer may be the most wonderful summer of her life. Down the hill, there was a simple stone cottage in a garden that rivaled her own. It was flourishing with lilacs and lupines and, oddly enough, wisteria trees that hung over the thatched roof, peppering purple petals over the home. It was the man in that garden that made her heart pause for a moment. He stood in the tall grass, surrounded by a halo of yellow sunflowers and daisies. One of his hands was coiled around a paintbrush, 
and the other was gently placed on his easel, which was set up perfectly in the light of rising sun. The canvas before him was a masterpiece in the making. It was as though it had been plucked out of the French countryside in the Impressionist period. A swath of blues and greens and purples that immediately made Wisteria feel at ease. And despite painting with these lavish colors, he was clothed in a white shirt which hung loosely over his frame on the warm summer morning. His dark eyes were focused on the painting in a considerate way. He looked as though he was miles away, meandering through the very land that he was crafting on canvas. Wisteria watched as he thoughtfully wiped his dark curls away from his eyes with the back of his hand, being mindful of the purple paint on the end of his paintbrush. She had never seen this man before. In fact, only days ago, no one called the beautiful little cottage home. She left the window open and threw on a white cotton dress, the perfect freeing, breathable dress for a day like today. She slung a straw hat over her shoulder and slipped on a pair of sandals before she headed out the front door. She walked down, 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 down the hill, growing nearer and nearer to the man's home. She hovered by his garden gate for a moment, her fingers gently placed on the iron latch with uncertainty. Up close, somehow, he was even more handsome. He turned his gaze to her. His eyes widened the slightest bit, something she could see him try to suppress for a moment. You're the writer, the man breathed. Wisteria canted her head, trying to connect lines between the dots that weren't quite there. I am, but how do you know that? She asked. The man smiled at her a bit sheepishly. He set his paintbrush down with great care. I hope you don't find this unsettling but I saw you last night sitting in your window up on the hill. You were the only other one awake. Indeed, he had seen her last night. As he set up the last bit of furniture in his new home, he glanced up the hill to find that her lights were the only other lights on in the town. She sat in the window, silhouetted by a soft, warm glow. And, in place of a pen and paper or a laptop, she typed on a typewriter. She was utterly transfixed as the page filled with more and more ink. As the words flowed out of her, and into the world. The man watched her for a few minutes. He watched as she scrunched up her nose, trying to find the right words. He watched as she rested her hand under her chin. 
eyes slightly narrowed as she tried to find the most beautiful way to weave the story she needed to tell. It was an intimate moment seeing her there yet so far away in the world that she was creating. For a second in time, he thought about painting her, about drawing the contours of her face, the introspective gleam in her eye, the way her hand rested softly on her cheek. And at times, the way she ran it up over her face and through her hair when an idea wasn't flowing as much as she would like it to. Yet, he brushed that thought away. Perhaps that day would come sometime, but it had not come yet. Instead, he turned out his lights, gave his paint set a tap, and went to bed. Now, standing before her, he felt as though he was standing before a muse. He was worried that he would offend her, but she simply smiled at him. I'm the writer and you're the painter, she replied. She extended her hand, introducing herself as Wisteria. The man couldn't help but glimpse at the Wisterias that were hanging just overhead. My name is Atlas, he said back. And from that moment on, Atlas and Wisteria knew that their lives were going to be intertwined. At that point in time, they had no idea of how long that would truly be. But soon, over the course of a day, while enjoying the splendor of summer, they would get a hint about how interconnected their lives would be. They sat in the garden for quite some time, just getting to know one another. Atlas was a painter that had lived in the city. He longed to move to a place where he could paint and enjoy everything nature had to offer without being distracted by the hustle and bustle of the city. He longed to have a yard and fresh air and quiet places where inspiration could be found. Wisteria, on the other hand, had a totally different experience. She was born and raised on the island. Her mother was a lobster woman and her father was a man from the mainland. She grew up exploring every inch of the island. She had slept in the meadows of wildflowers, swam on the beaches, dived into the ocean from the rocky cliffs. It was a charmed childhood, yet a lonely one. She had turned to books and stories for comfort. Most days, she could be found lying in the grass somewhere with her nose in a book relishing every word. When her classmates moved to the mainland for jobs and better opportunities, she stayed on the island 
in her childhood home and got to work writing. And yet, even with their completely different upbringings, their stories made them feel more connected. Atlas, too, had felt like an outsider. He had hoped the island would feel like home, yet he had no idea how to make that happen. Wisteria gave him a smile. It's the first day of summer, she chimed. That makes the island home for everyone. Let me show you. Atlas set down the tea he had been drinking and abandoned his painting for the day. Wisteria took him gently by the hand. At first, he was hesitant. There were still boxes to unpack, the painting to finish, things to get done. But they didn't need to be done right now. Life had handed him a perfect day, a perfect opportunity, and the perfect person to experience the island in all its glory. He followed Wisteria with a smile, but to his surprise, rather than to lead him down toward the town, she led him up the hill. There's a better way than walking to experience this town, she told him with a wink. When they arrived at her house, Wisteria pulled a bike out of the garage. It was an antique bike with large, rounded handlebars and a wicker basket fixed to the front. Atlas couldn't help but smile at the sight. Wisteria patted the handlebars with a smile. Atlas hadn't ridden on a bike with someone else since he was a small child. The idea of doing it again filled him with a kind of joy he didn't know he could still feel. He climbed up on the handlebars as Wisteria grabbed on and put her feet on the pedals. Then, slowly, they began to roll down the cobblestone street. There was a loss of gravity, a sense of freedom and wonder that washed over him in a serene wave as the tires started to glide faster and faster down the hill. He could hear the click, 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 click of the wheel as it rolled over the cobblestones. He heard the whoosh of the air washing over his body and his hair. As they glided down the hill, he found himself giggling. The adorable island passed by them in a colorful blur. Small details popped out that made him feel more and more connected to his new home. There were children playing in a yard, splashing through sprinklers and giggling. There was an odd couple sitting in rocking chairs, licking chocolate ice cream cones with warm smiles on their faces. There was the florist, whose store was flourishing so much 
that flowers seem to be spilling out of the building. It was a spread of every summer flower you could imagine. Sunflowers and daisies and lilacs that poured onto the streets in a stunning display of color. There were people walking down the sidewalks, beach balls, umbrellas, and towels in hand. Straw hats flopped over their faces. Sunscreen glistened on their noses and the rosy cheeks of the children. As they passed by on the bike, every person they rode by waved in delight. Atlas waved back, careful to quickly plop his hand back on the handlebars after he said his polite and enthusiastic hello. The street they were riding on was narrow. As there were no cars, they were free to swerve and glide wherever they wanted. On every turn, Wisteria would gently tap his shoulder, urging him to lean with her toward the turn. It was a rhythm they found with each other, something that brought them a sense of teamwork at the very beginning of their journey. At one point, Atlas closed his eyes. He felt utterly weightless, charmed by the surreal experience he found himself having. When he opened his eyes again, he was surprised to find that they were flying toward a low-hanging flowering tree. He closed his eyes again, bracing for the leaves to hit his face. The flowers collided with his skin and scattered into the air like fireworks. Wisteria began to laugh so hard that the bike swayed left and right with her laughter. Atlas began to laugh alongside her, grabbing the handlebars to keep himself in place. Finally, they reached the bottom of the street right alongside the ocean. Atlas hopped off the bike, then helped Wisteria off. Her cheeks were tinged pink from the happiness of the bike ride, from the feeling of the wind rushing over her skin, from the laughter they had shared. She asked Atlas if he had had breakfast yet, and he told her he had not. Once more, she took him by the hand and led him into a cozy little cafe that overlooked the ocean. It was a hole-in-the-wall place, peppered with tiny, intricately molded iron tables and walls that were lined with paperback books. It smelled of freshly baked bread and French pressed coffee, but also something surprising, something he never expected to smell in a cafe. It smelled strongly of fresh strawberries. Wisteria spoke with the owners 
as if they were old friends. The owner introduced himself to Atlas and welcomed him to town before handing him a wicker basket and saying, for your first breakfast here on the house. Wisteria led Atlas outside to the small garden behind the cafe. It reminded him of the secret garden. There were stone tiles surrounded by plush moss. A garden was teeming with vibrant flowers and bees happily buzzing from flower to flower. Summer was in full swing, comfortably encapsulated in this tiny cafe garden, which they had all to themselves. Atlas was surprised by what was in the basket. There were pastries dusted with powdered sugar and filled with fresh strawberry puree. There was fresh fruit, mangoes, and passion fruit, and pineapple, all cut up into summer shapes and placed in a colorful container. Then there was the most surprising thing of all, a small glass Sunday cup filled to the brim with blush pink ice cream. Mixed into the smooth homemade ice cream were chunks of freshly picked strawberries and black specks of vanilla bean. It was only then that he noticed the strawberry bush beside him, which was overflowing with ripe, heavy strawberries. Wisteria insisted that they had to eat the ice cream first. It was the shopkeeper's special, a recipe that had been handed down for generations and generations. When Atlas took his first bite, he could hardly believe what he was tasting. It was the creamiest, sweetest, most satisfying bite of ice cream he had ever had. It melted against his tongue and cooled his body instantly in the summer sun which was rising higher and higher by the moment. It was perfection. He picked up the next spoonful and offered it to Asteria. She gave him a soft smile as he fed it to her. He could feel his heart skip a beat in his chest. This was something he could certainly grow accustomed to. For about an hour, they sat in that garden, sharing ice cream and pastries. Every bite was sweeter than the last, and their smiles seemed to grow over time. By the time the basket was empty, they were both full and ready to see what else the island had to offer them. Naturally, midday on the island is where most people found themselves on the beach. Atlas was surprised when Wisteria took him by the hand and led him away from the beach that was dotted with happy people enjoying their day in the sun. In 
Instead, she led him along a rocky stretch of coastline. Rocks crunched beneath their feet with every step that they took. He was unsure why they were going in such a strange direction. That is, until they crested over the rocks and he saw the private sandy cove below. There wasn't a single soul on it. The beach was perfectly tucked between two towering rocky peaks, hiding it from view and turning it into a serene hidden gem. They walked along the untouched sand, relishing the feeling of the sun on their skin. Wisteria dipped her toes in the waves and cast Atlas a smile that made his heart melt. It was as if they were in a world of their own. They walked and talked for what seemed like hours as the sun shone down on them and the seagulls called overhead. On more than one occasion, Wisteria bent down to show him a tidal pool full of fascinating ocean creatures, starfish that clung to the rocks, crabs that scuttled in between the rocks or tucked themselves away behind slivers of seaweed. By the time they were done on the beach, Atlas was surprised by how drowsy he was. Once again, Wisteria convinced him to hop on the bike. She pedaled along the coastline, heading to the west side of the island the wilder, untouched part of the island. As the cozy homes faded away, the landscape became more and more beautiful. Small rivers and creeks wound through rolling green meadows, and in the distance, there was a promising location rising seemingly out of nowhere. A hill that was a kaleidoscope of colors, pinks, purples, greens, and yellows. A hill that was truly alive with wildflowers. It was so breathtaking that Atlas felt as though he was frozen in time for a moment. They parked the bike and wandered into the meadow. Atlas could feel the petals brush against his skin as he walked. The aroma of the wildflowers embraced him as he walked further into the meadow. And then, Wisteria pulled out a blanket she laid it in the middle of the grass with flowers surrounding them. They lay down on the blanket and within a few minutes, Atlas felt his eyes closing. Wisteria told him that this was the best part of the summer experience. You enjoy the ocean, take in all it has to offer, and then you must enjoy the land and what it has to offer as well. He could feel the heat of the summer sun on his skin. 
Around them, the wildflowers danced and swayed in the breeze. He listened to them as they swayed back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The rhythm of the rustling put him utterly at ease. And then something else happened that made the moment even more peaceful. Wisteria placed her head on his chest. His heart stopped for a brief second as he took time to understand what was happening. Gently, he wrapped his hand around the small of her back, holding her in place. They lay like this for quite some time, until their breathing started to fall in sync with one another. Atlas had never felt such a sense of serenity in his life. Gradually, with the rustling wildflowers and the rays of the sun, he felt his eyes grow heavier and heavier. For the next hour, he was utterly calm. When he awakened, it wasn't with a start or as if he was in a dream. He simply opened his eyes and savored the feeling that lying in the sun had left on his skin. He glanced down at Wisteria, who was still asleep on his chest. He dared not move, instead deciding to lie there with her for as long as she needed. He stroked her back and smoothed her hair, breathing in the scent of her lavender shampoo and of the flowers all around them. When she finally awakened, the sky was beginning to change. The sleepy summer sun began to sink down below the horizon. A watercolor of pinks, purples, orange, and yellow spread across the sky in a stunning display. Slowly, they got up from their spot in the meadow and began their journey back home. They didn't feel the need to talk on their way back. Instead, they simply enjoyed the changing scenery around them and the comfort they had found in each other's company. With every step of the way, the sunset seemed to shift and grow even more brilliant. By the time they reached the house, mere slivers of orange and red streaked the sky as it gradually turned to night. Wisteria invited Atlas into her backyard. There was one final summer moment he had to experience before he went home. In the center of her stunning backyard was a campfire Atlas helped her prep the tinder and make the perfect start. And just as the last bit of the sunset disappeared below the horizon, just as the stars began to push through the inky black sky and show themselves, 
the fire started. They curled up by the fire, wrapped in soft blankets. They watched in silence as the fire grew and grew and grew and grew. He gazed into it, transfixed, as he listened to it crackle, 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 crackle. His body felt more relaxed than it had in years. When he glanced up, he saw wisteria illuminated in the orange glow of the fire. The way it reflected in her eyes, the way she rested her chin on her hand and watched the flames dance with a half smile. In that instant, he knew what he had to do. He rose from his chair and promised Wisteria that he would be back in a few moments. Back at his house, only a few houses down from hers, he grabbed his canvas and his paint. When he returned, he got out his brush and asked Wisteria to stay sitting exactly as she was. She blushed slightly and agreed. Slowly and deliberately, Atlas began to paint her. Around them, the crickets chirped, grateful for the warm summer night. Below, they could hear the crash, 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 crash of the waves, steady and ever-present. It was as if the universe was crafting a symphony just for them. Every stroke of the paintbrush felt right to Atlas. He wasn't painting with logic, nor with his schooling in mind, nor with the expectations of society. He was simply painting for himself, to remember and embrace the day that he had had with a special person. Soon, the painting was finished. His hands and his white shirt were peppered with paint, but he didn't mind. And when he showed the painting to Wisteria, any other worry in the world melted away. Tears formed in Wisteria's eyes. She wrapped her arms around him, drawing him against her. They didn't let go for quite some time, because for the first time in their lives, they didn't feel so alone. When they parted, Atlas gave Wisteria a simple kiss on the forehead. He lingered there, giving the moment the time that it deserved. As the crickets continued to chirp and the fire continued to crackle, they held each other's hands. It was only the first day of summer, and ahead of them they had an entire summer full of memories to make. I hope you've enjoyed this sleep story and it has helped you reach a night of peaceful, relaxing sleep. Please, join me again tomorrow for another sleep story. Until then, sweet dreams.